Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to be able to join you today here. And I want to thank, uh, first of all, the Italian Trade Commission and its uh, Machines Italia project, along with the Industry Week, uh, Words Out the World, for the invitation to be here today. Two years ago, a lot of people thought the Fiat decision to enter an alliance with Chrysler was doomed to fail. After all, Chrysler Group had just been formed as a new entity following a restructuring and taxpayer loans. Chrysler turnaround since then has been remarkable. In a span of 19 months, we made a major upgrade to our product lineup. We brought out 16 all new or substantially revised products with announcements such as new powertrains, fresh designs, vastly improved interiors, and with improved overall quality as measured by independent sources like GD Power and Associates. Customer response to these products has been fantastic. Our US sales have increased every month for 26 straight months on a year-to-year -year basis, and we have increased our market share more than any other major automaker. We also gained more market share than any other manufacturer in Canada in both 2010 and 2011. In May 2011, we were able to repay in full our US and Canadian government loans with interest and six years ahead of schedule. We remain grateful for the support given to us in our time of need, and we are committed to justifying the fate that the taxpayers placed in us. We are also profitable again, and in the first quarter this year, we recorded the net income for $473 million, our best results since the formation of the new Chrysler Group in June 2009. Chrysler comeback follows in the footsteps of what Fiat did a few years earlier. We are familiar with the situation. In 2004, many observers were predicting the certain demise of Fiat. Yet by 2008, Fiat had implemented such a significant turnaround that it achieved the highest trading profit in its entire 111 years history, up to that point. Cultural changes have made the difference at both Chrysler and Fiat, and we have made the commitment to embrace change, to cherish competition, and to be accountable. One of the key drivers of this cultural change is world-class manufacturing. From this moment, I will call it WCM. WCM began in Fiat in 2006, including Fiat business units as Case New Holland, Ivico, Fiat Powertrain, and Magneti Marelli. And then it spread to Chrysler when the alliance between the two groups began less than three years ago. Today, WCM is the way Fiat and Chrysler people work in 168 plants around the world and in 16 countries for four continents. I should mention that the WCM is not restricted to the automotive industry. It is a system that also is used in not automotive areas by companies as Barilla, Royal Mail, Thermal Ceramics, Elica Arison Thermo, and Villanova Logistics. WCM was originally developed by Fiat along with other European and Japanese experts. Part of the development involved benchmarking other top manufacturing operations. What we came up with was a structured, rigorous, and integrated system that encompasses all plant processes from safety to the environment and from maintenance to logistic and quality. The goal is to continuously improve performance in order to reach the objective of zero waste. Waste is broadly defined as, and it includes the goal for zero accidents, zero breakdown, zero inventories. Zero is the most beautiful number for us. This approach creates value for both the business and the customer, ensuring product quality and maximum flexibility in responding to customer needs by involving and motivating employees at every level. The biggest drivers of change sit with you. World-class manufacturing, by whatever name is known, is designed to deliver what I consider to be the ethical byproduct of a very rational argument about how we make things. There's something fundamentally unethical about waste. And people don't realize this when you are as involved as you are in what you do. Waste is unethical. It transcends moral values that I don't share. And society does not. 
We're sitting in a world where we're competing daily for scarce resources. And the institutionalizing of environments or production systems that embody waste is fundamentally unethical. And so, as much as we drive for integrity in what we do, world-class manufacturing is probably one of the highest examples of integrity that I can find. And so not only do I support it, but I want it. In no unmistakable terms, I want it. I want it because when we finish this process of creating a great industrial group, an international industrial group, I want this house to be known not only for the financial results that it's had, but because it has been able to establish a production system which is world class. This house deserves it. And so we're committing resources, time, efforts, people to fundamentally change the way we run this business. And without your support on this world-class manufacturing, we're not going to make it. We're just not. This was Christmas 2008. Just the beginning uh, of the journey for, for Fiat. And I see this movie very actual. The message is that without the leadership uh, of the boss of the company, we cannot apply this. It's a really a transformation, it's really a revolution in the plants. We can go ahead one. Thank you. Because the plummet serves as the compass to keep the entire system going in the right direction. Because the plummet begins with a systematic analysis to identify all losses and all wastes in the plant. These issues are pri prioritized in order to focus our efforts and the resources toward the corrective actions with the greatest potential to make a difference. With the WCM, there are 10 technical pillars or areas of concentration such as safety, workplace organization, quality control, logistic, people development, and environment. There are also 10 managerial pillars. This is the new, and such as a commitment and clarity of objective, aimed at improving communication, training, motivation of operators, and others. Within each pillar, incremental levels of improvements and results are clearly identified and measurable. The end goal is to eliminate waste by attaining goals such as zero injuries, zero quality defects, and zero waste of motion. Again, the zeros. The king of waste is what we call not value added activities. From now, NVAA. A prime example of NVAA occurs on the production line when an operator has to take many steps just to get a part before putting it on the vehicle. We want to pay the employee for working, not for walking. And the customer expects to pay for the bolt that the workers screw on, but not for the time spending retrieving the part. The WCM system has identified a 60 degree window in front of us that is the ideal range for presenting parts to an individual operator. We call this the golden zone. As part of the workplace organization pillar, we strive to deliver parts to the employee in the golden zone in order to reduce no value added working. The emphasis on the golden zone also reduces economic concern and helps improve quality. In this video clip taken at our engine plant in Dundee, Michigan, you can see how parts are delivered to the operator's golden zone. Previously, the operator turned 180 degrees on his back, took two steps, reached into one of the two damaged carts to pick up the part, and then took two steps back to the line and to install it. Now you can see the difference. Autonomous maintenance is another one of the WCM technical pillars. Workers take on the responsibility of keeping their areas clean and their equipment functioning at peak conditions. The first step in autonomous maintenance is to restore the machine to the basic conditions. This involves first cleaning the machine, but then finding all the sources of contamination and attacking the root cause of each. This will sustain the basic condition forever. The goal is to have again zero breakdowns to the lack of basic conditions. So for each step in this pillar, the number of breakdowns is measured. The next step in autonomous maintenance is to reduce the time it takes the operator to maintain the machine. This is an example on how the team combined nine different gauge locations 
to one location, reducing nine inspection points to one, resulting in an inspection time saving. And uh, in addition, they simplified the inspection by making all indicators points in the same direction, reducing the chance of error. During my career, I have seen uh, several manufacturing initiatives coming and go. Chrysler has also used a number of lean manufacturing programs in the past. Someone uh, heard about the COS, Chrysler Operating System, or the Smart System, or the TPM System, Total Product and Maintenance, or many other acronyms in the last year. The key difference is what the WCM deals not only with the technical side of the plant operation, but also with the people and with the managerial side, which is critical when you consider there that there are 39,000 hourly and salaried employees in the manufacturing side of Chrysler in North America. The human element is at the center of the WCM. Our success depends on the involvement of our workers, workers in team. Team members understand that they have a vital role to play in improving their areas of work. Everyone is encouraged to continually make suggestions and every suggestion is considered and evaluated for potential application. WCM requires what I call the psychological contract between management and hourly workers. Managers need to trust workers as being the best workforce, workforce possible, and workers need to trust the managers are leading them in the right direction. We could not succeed in implementing WCM without the cooperation of our unions, the UAW and the CAW. It is a win-win situation because management recognizes we need the knowledge, experience, creativity, and dedication of these unionized workers, and the unions realize that the well-being of their members is tied to Chrysler's success. As a part of enhancing pride and bringing dignity to the workplace, one of the first things we do is engage the workforce in cleaning up the plant, restoring the basic condition in order to have a better place in which to work and to increase ownership. One of the methods we use for creating a new culture in each plant is what we call the Triple H, which stands for hearts, heads, and hands. The idea is that you need to engage the heart so that the hands and the head will create something worthwhile. The Triple H helps build the pride, engage the passion of workers, and create a warmer, less sterile work environment. In each plant, it begins with the workshop made up of about 20 employees and several months or perhaps a year after we begin implementing WCM processes so that people have already begun to understand the system's principles. The group works to identify the plant's core values, what makes the plant special. In identifying these values, they cut out photos, create storyboards that illustrate them. These are then translated into images. These vary from plant to plant, reflecting the people there. For example, workers at the Toledo Assembly Complex in Ohio identified that their core values as a teamwork, as ambition, as a competitiveness, and heritage. The last one reflecting their pride in being the home of the Jeep brand. You know, last year, 70 years of Jeep. At the Brampton Assembly Plant in Ontario, Canada, employees come up with a creative way to portray diversity as one of their core values, with this image of a single tree producing different kinds of fruit and supporting the idea of imagining a totally safe plant, top quality product, and a secure job. The images are displayed throughout the plant and the values drive activities. They are the focus of town halls, team meetings, and even the way team members become involved with their communities. WCM put a significant emphasis on training, and this includes a 24 weeks program for newly hired salary employees in manufacturing. Managers get an opportunity during this program to put their learning in place on specific projects. After 12 weeks, we review the manager's development and provide feedback on where improvements can be made. And after the full 24 weeks, he or she is certified in WCM. Another crucial part of our training process was the creation of the WCM Academy, which opened in January 2012 at the UAW Chrysler Technology Training Center located in Warren, Michigan. The Academy was created to accelerate the pace and the rigor of the WCM implementation. It combines classroom and laboratory session with the emphasis on hands-on exercises in problem solving. The video will give you an idea of how the center engages the workers who come from here for training. 
Flying ping pong balls, racing slot cars, toy bikes. Sounds like fun, but these employees are not just playing around. They're learning about what it takes to be a world-class manufacturer. In January, Chrysler officially dedicated a state-of-the-art world-class manufacturing academy in Warren, Michigan. Spread over 25,000 square feet of the UAW Chrysler Technology Training Center, the Academy's mission is to transfer WCM know-how to Chrysler employees throughout the organization. Since June 2009, World Class Manufacturing, or WCM, has been a key agent in driving change in a culture that's been absolutely critical to the revitalization of Chrysler as a whole. The WCM Academy housed here at the UAW Chrysler Technical Training Center building will be part of a center of excellence that will enable us to accelerate the pace which we continue the implementation of the comprehensive and rigorous manufacturing system to even higher level. The goal of WCM is to generate continuous improvement in a systematic and organized way by involving everyone at every level and it applies to all aspects of a plant's operations as does this facility. That's where the WCM Academy fits in. From the moment you walk into this state-of-the-art facility, it's clear that WCM is not the flavor of the month program. It's the way we do business. It's the only way we do business. The success of the Academy depends on collaboration. Collaboration with our Fiat colleagues, with our UAW partners, with our plants, and most importantly with our employees who are investing their time to participate in these training sessions. My mom always told me, once you've got something here, you'll never lose it. No one can ever take that away from you. Its concept is what WCM does for you. It broadens your thinking ability. It gives you the opportunity to work with others in a close-knitted environment. And that's what it's all about. And at the end of the day, we're hoping that we transform our members, Chrysler's employees, into the best quality manufacturing employees that the dollar can buy. And we also recognize that we cannot negotiate job security, that they're going to have to earn it. And the way they're going to earn it, and with one of the tools, would be through WCM. What looks like a good time is really a great way to train Chrysler employees in problem-solving techniques that can be taken back to the plant to implement a smoother, safer, and more efficient manufacturing process while producing the highest quality vehicles. For Chrysler Electronic Communications, I'm Pete Messiah. Such a story. At the first, uh, we thought we might have to ask our plants to please send people to the Academy. But the response has been so overwhelming that we have twice as many applicants as we have slots for training at the moment. The plants understand that the people coming out of the academy are great assets because of their success in applying their learning when they come back to the plant, making projects for great improvements. Later, the workers return to the academy to share their experience on the projects, which helps us add to our collection of best practices to share across the Chrysler and Fiat manufacturing system. Through May, about uh, 1,500 workers representing more than 40 manufacturing facilities have gone through training programs at the Academy. The financial results of the home plant projects have made the Academy an excellent business case, producing our savings for over $1 million at the moment, and then figure is expected to grow to nearly $2.5 in savings by the year end. There are many examples on how our people are embracing WCM, but perhaps the best one is the fact that in 2011, Chrysler plant workers in North America made 282,000 proposals for improvements, and that 70% of those suggestions were implemented. Our audit results also demonstrated the progress being made. Regular audits are part of the WCM systems, enabling us to benchmark progress and pointing the way to future improvements. The auditors come from different regions of the world that the plant is being reviewed. The audit covers all the technical and managerial pillars, and each plant receives a score based on its knowledge on the implementation of the WCM process and improvements. The top plants achieve bronze, then silver, then gold, and then finally world-class status. In less than three years, the Dundee engine plant in Michigan and the Windsor assembly plant in Canada and Ontario became the first Chrysler facility to earn bronze status in North America. 
The audit system enables continuous benchmarking between group entities and facilities and facilitates a constructive exchange between different members of the association and on experience gained and solution applied. WCM is a system that works in Fiat and Chrysler facilities across all four regions, then in Europe, in Asia, in Latin America, as well as in North America. Each region has its own head, but the overall commitment is to sharing best practices. One way is by the use of the SharePoint software in order to make documents and information on best practices available to every plant from Shanghai to Italy, from Brazil to Dundee. Each month, we also conduct a four-hour integration event on a specific pillar online, and the online participants from around the world discuss the problems and offer solutions. Managers and team leaders also make benchmarking trips to other plants in and out the region to advance the learning. Chrysler has gone through a huge transformation over the past three years, and WCM is playing a big role in the revitalization of the group. In fact, the principles of WCM are being adopted by other parts of the Chrysler company, such as the logistic part, the manufacturing engineering part, and the Mopar brand. We are also working with the key suppliers to implement aspects of this manufacturing system, recognizing that they play a big role in our overall performance. WCM is crucial to our competitiveness and our future. It involves everyone at every level of our organization. With the WCM, there is no room for excuses. The words sorry, hopefully, and waiting are being banished from our vocabulary. Instead of pointing fingers of blame, we are focused on removing problems as quickly as we can in order to achieve the zero concept, again the zero. WCM is not another project or initiative because it does come and go. It has no end point because it is focused on continuous improvement. To put it simply, WCM is the way we run our business, the only way we can run our business now. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. the uh, question is, as far as acceptance in your supply chain from your partners of world-class manufacturing, uh, how has the acceptance been and how prepared are they to meet those standards? Very good question. You can imagine how much is the value of the car uh, in terms of the sharing between the suppliers uh, and the car construction. No? The suppliers uh, are really key for this. First of all, we need uh, to work with the same logic we have for our improvement in the house. We go to choose the worst performer in terms of the plant of the supplier that is providing us the parts. The worst performer could be on quality issues or on shortages issues. Okay? Then we made the ranking of this, starting from the worst, and we attack the worst losses. Then we identify plants that are not only totally dedicated to us, they can also work for some other car constructors. And we go through the purchasing uh, department with the supplier quality insurance department because until we have nothing in the contract, uh, until we have nothing uh, that is uh, in a system, we cannot uh, start to work uh, in the right way. At the moment, uh, this program in Europe is mature and we have uh, more than 100 suppliers involved. We started uh, just a few months ago here in North America and then we have uh, a few of suppliers, the program is to go faster because you know the value of the car is in the supplier. But again, the key to answer to you is to have it in the purchasing order. Okay. My question is also related to regarding the supply chain. One of the one of your slides, you say you, the goal of the WCM program is reduce uh, waste to zero. But one thing that caught my attention was the uh, the zero inventory. Okay, which is something that you've seen around, it's been uh, uh, sort of used or applied by many companies. But um, how confident are you, or how would you deal with the situations like the tsunami in Japan and what Toyota had to go through with the supply chain? Are you mm -hmm. confident that this system would provide you the tool to snap back into and re rebuild your supply chain as quickly as Toyota did after, or better? You really made the two questions. The yeah. first question is, uh, inside the plants, how we manage this? Hmm? And i tell you a nice story, true story. First day I was uh, in uh, the Wrangler facility down in Toledo, 
where I worked in the last two years, I could not see the guys working on the line for the quantity of material that was on the line side. Okay, but this was not an exception. In Europe, in the US, everywhere they made cars. That was the style. Put everything there in the way we are safe. Okay? The result was, if you heard me, that the people was walking up and down to pick parts in a crazy way, and we had the lady that we paid to make 72 steps for each car. I remember that case. Now, if you go there, he saw, <laughs> it wasn't the plan. The material is in the golden zone. The guys are no more working. The material is in front of you, just put there. And then the inventory on the side line is a zero. But the zero means no law. It's a zero. Okay? There is no one part number more than you, that you need to put on the car. The second question is if a WCM is good against a natural disaster. No. This is not the solution. WCM is not the solution against the natural disaster. There is a weakness in the system that is a weakness that we want because this weakness uh, is giving us a lot of savings every year, of, every year that we have not any natural disaster. But when the natural disaster is coming, you pay. Because each car constructor has one supplier for each part number. It could be located everywhere in the world, but if that supplier could be tier one, could be tier two, could be tier three also, like in the case of Japan, is stopping, there is no one else that can do the part number in a short term. You know that we stopped the production a couple of, col of colors because a special material was coming just from that shore. Okay? But WCM is not a solution against uh, natural disaster. As a um, key supplier for Chrysler, um, your WCM Academy is what are you supplying? Continental. Then tires, and, but also some other things. Yeah, I do the power distribution boxes for okay, your cars. 100 part of numbers, so just to give them an idea. Yep. It's not a supplier, it's one of the suppliers. One yeah. of the suppliers, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the question is, your WCM Academy, is it uh, Chrysler's vision to expand that to the key suppliers, invite them in there as well? Are you speaking about the use of the Academy? Yes. Yes. Then, as, uh, as everything, uh, when you start, uh, you have uh, some ideas. Hmm? Sometimes what you start, is going to die. Sometimes what you start is going to explode. Hmm? And this is the case of the Academy. We started the Academy just for the Detroit-based plants of Chrysler. We have 30 plants around North America. About 17, 18 are located in Detroit area. That was the main purpose. Now the situation, as you saw, is that we have a double request than our capacity. Then, in this moment, I'm not able to, to give good service to my customers that are the plants are located in the Detroit area. Then, uh, I would like to expand it to the supplier, but at this moment, uh, I will commit suicide if I go there, right? What is the plan? The plan is to expand the academy inside the building, because in this moment, we are occupying about a quarter of that building. Then, the plan is... Uh, to make uh, what we call the triple C is the continuous circle of change. Then every six months we do something new. Then the next step is to expand that academy in the way we are sure that we can give a good service to our customers, Detroit plant area. And eventually, further step could be a, another expansion to have the suppliers coming in the academy, but we are speaking about the suppliers of the first question. Then the suppliers that accept the WCM is a system to work for Chrysler. We have suppliers uh, as your that uh, are giving parts uh, basically to everybody, okay? There are suppliers that are accepting to work in the WCM just for Chrysler. Why this? Because the WCM is a kind of language. And if we want to interact, we need to speak the same language. If I speak this language in my company, and you don't understand my language, I don't want that you speak that language in your house, but you don't understand the language, we cannot interact in the same way as I can interact with another company or supplier that is using that. Okay? You can have this language both in plants that are located inside the supplier park, or you can have also some plants that are accepted to work in WCM 50 miles, 100 miles away. 
Again, if you want to come to visit the academy, you are welcome. There is a system. You can make a visit and you understand what is the, the matter there. To use the academy as a supplier, there is only one way. Accept to enter in the program of the WCM Lite, that we call the supplier program, then speak with the boss of, of, uh, of the purchasing, enter it there, and then we can access uh, to the academy. Okay? But if you want to come for a visit, you are welcome. Go. Oh, we have two here. It's okay. We have all night long. Sorry for the golfers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sir, you mentioned on the SharePoint the documentation. Sorry, who are you? Uh, I'm sorry, Greg Ketcher. Uh, we do shipping and creating manufacturing for your export products. Um, we suffer from different supplier bases not being able to do multiple langu language documents. Are you planning on having the SharePoint program go out to your service providers as well? It's a very good question. Then uh, we have a group of people, uh, very good people, that are working very hard between Fiat and Chrysler to commonize the good things, okay? And the SharePoint software is one of these good things. It's clear that uh, everybody in the company, from the product to logistics to manufacturing, uh, WCM, uh, all the parts of the company, because now we work in four continents, we need the system like that. And then there is a, a line of requests, and the, there is a priority. And uh, where are we going to work firstly? Where the losses and the wastes are the worst. Because we feel that if we fix the worst, the overall performance of the company will improve dramatically. Then we are going there. For sure, logistic and the, the remote supply chain is in the top three, five, for sure. Then this is uh, one thing that we need to go to do quickly. Before these here hands, we will have three, the top three categories that uh, will work with SharePoint. And uh, as uh, uh, Sergio Marchione said, the integration between the two companies is not tended in 2012. We are not yet there, okay? Very good question. This could be a big accelerator factor. Oh, a lot. Sorry if I interrupt you. Uh, the guy that spoke with you and me took a big point. That is the total cost of production. The cost of production is not only the manpower. The total cost of production has the manpower as a key factor, perhaps not the worst factor. We need to look at everything. And that is an important factor that in the last 10 years, nobody took. Thank you for the question. Hello, um, Stephen Ouellette from Harbor Technologies. We're uh, um, a Chrysler vendor for custom machine tools and automation. Um, just wondering um, how far along you guys are with, uh, in regards to the, the golden zone and the uh, um, autonomous maintenance um, free improvements. Um, how much is Chrysler going to be investing into this and how, you know, how far along are you and, and is there any targets or goals that you guys have set? We have a targeted goals for each year and as a strategy plan in the next three, five years. And the WCM, according to the plan we had three years ago in Chrysler, we are moving a little bit better than the plan, okay? But it's also true, as I said at the end, that this system is not a static system. It's a system that is in evolution. Then for each one of the 20 pillars, the requests are always rising and the expectations are always rising. Just to compare, uh, you know that in Europe we started earlier with this program than in North America. In terms of speed, here in North America we are going faster than in Europe because we are taking advantage about all the mistakes that we made in Europe. We are not repeating them here for sure. But in terms of absolute value, there is a gap till today that we need to, to fill. And then the program in, in this year and the next year is uh, to beat that position. Okay. There was another one. Uh, just a quick one. Uh, you mentioned some of the prerequisites for implementing this program, such as leadership vision. Uh, I was just wondering what were some of the major obstacles you f discovered in doing so and how you overcame those obstacles? Very good question. We have only one obstacle to implement in this system. Just one, ourselves. Why? Human nature. 
if someone is pushing me to change, my reaction is to stay. It's a principle. Everywhere in the world, all the continents, all the races, everywhere is doing the same. Then we are the most important obstacle that we can find in our path in WCM. In the moment people understand that applying these few examples that I gave you, at the end of the day, you will go home less tired, you will move less, you will have less ergonomic issues, you will gain more money, you will have the best profit, you will have the best savings. Should be insane, don't go there. But until you de demonstrate this, people are uh, skeptic. People are skeptic. And uh, until you don't demonstrate that, the human nature is telling them, stay. Then that is important why leadership is important. I put that movie there because the message I want to pass is that each cultural change cannot happen if leadership is not pushing that. If you heard the word of Sergio, he didn't say this is a system I like, this is a system we have to use, or this is the system we will export. He said this is the system I wanted. And he put a three seconds pause after the wanted word. Because if leadership want to change a company, they can do it. We did this two times with Fiat and Chrysler, and I don't know if other guys are able to do that. But leadership is important, it's key. It's a top-down process. And I tell you, workforces we have here are the best workforces I have had in my life. I work at the basically everywhere in the world. Leadership, give a guidance, they go.